So recently, I wanted to set up a simple workflow automation for myself using a tool called NetN. It's kind of like Zapier or Make.com. You build automations visually, drag and drop style, and it integrates with a ton of services out of the box. The problem is that if you want your automations to run frequently, it gets expensive very fast. I just wanted my workflow to run every 15 minutes, and this already put me in the pro tier, which is 50 euros a month. The good news is, since NNN is open source, you can self-host it. And this, of course, let me down a rabbit hole of self-hosting. And that's how I stumbled upon a tool called Coolify. Coolify makes it ridiculously easy to self-host not just NNN, but pretty much any open source app, including your own projects, without needing to be a DevOps wizard. It's like Vercel or Heroku, but for your own server. You get a slick web UI, automatic deployments, SSL certificates, webhooks, and a lot more out of the box. So in this video, I want to show you how I saved a bunch of time and money by setting up Coolify to self-host my own apps and databases. The first step is to get a VPS. A VPS is a virtual private server that we're renting out from some provider. It could be an AWS EC2 instance, you could rent it from Oracle, Hostinger, Hetzner, there are a lot of different providers. However, the most popular options for Coolify seem to be Hostinger and Hetzner. Personally, I chose to go with Hetzner because of their pricing model. While Hostinger is also a cheap option, it is only really cheap if you choose to commit for 24 months. If you want to have the flexibility to cancel every month, you pay a little premium for that. Hetzner, on the other hand, is a bit cheaper if you want the monthly billing option. But again, the provider doesn't really matter that much. I have already created a Hetzner account and logged into the Hetzner console. Here I can create a new project. Let's call it Coolify. YouTube and click on create server. For the location I recommend sticking to the one that is closest to you because the distance between the user and the server impacts the latency. In my case I will go with Nuremberg. Next we need to select the operating system of our server. I recommend going with Ubuntu. However, you also notice that there's an app section where you could directly select Coolify and I believe this would also run on Ubuntu. But anyways, in our case, let's not do that, let's just stick to the vanilla Ubuntu, because I want this tutorial to work for people that are not using Hetzner and don't have this option as well. Now we need to choose how powerful we want our server to be. The shared CPU option gives us the best price, but for production services, the dedicated CPU, which of course is a bit more expensive, would be recommended. We can also choose between different architectures here. I will go with the Intel architecture because it's less likely to encounter any incompatibility issues when installing software. Next we need to choose how much CPU, RAM and disk space we want. Technically Coolify only requires 2 CPU and 2 GB of RAM. However, I recommend going with a little bit more because that allows us to run other applications on the same server next to Coolify. Unfortunately, my preferred option, the CX22 instance, does not seem to be available at this point. This can happen sometimes with Hetzner, they have no capacity for this instance at this time. If that happens to you, you could wait and check back in tomorrow, or you could choose a different instance. For the purposes of this video, I will just go with a different instance. Next up in the networking section, we just want to make sure that we have public IPv4 and IPv6 both enabled and then we need to add an SSH key. Quick digression into what is SSH. SSH is a more secure way to authenticate with our server. Instead of using a username and password, which can be brute forced, SSH relies on a public and private key pair. The idea is that we store the public key on the server and the private key on our personal machine and through cryptography it is possible to verify that we are in possession of the private key just by having the public key. This is not only more secure but also more convenient. Let's generate this key pair together. To generate a new public and private key pair let's first go into the SSH directory. This is where our public and private keys are stored and here let's run the command ssh keygen dash t ed25519. The ed25519 is the algorithm that will generate the key pair. For file name I'm gonna pick Coolify YouTube and I'm not gonna enter a passphrase now. Now we can see that we have two new files here, Coolify YT and Coolify YT.pub. Let's have a quick look. So this is our public key that we will put on the server. 
And we also have here our private key that should not be shared with anyone. Now let's go ahead and copy our public key and add it to Hetzner. We can call it whatever we want. Let's call it Coolify YouTube video and add. For now we don't want to set up any additional volumes with extra storage. Firewalls, we'll set them up later. We don't need any backups for now. Placement groups, labels. The only thing that we still want to change might be the server name. So let's call this one maybe Ubuntu Coolify YouTube. Now if we click create and buy now, we will actually purchase this server and it takes a little while for the server to spin up. Once the server is running and indicated with this green dot, we can go ahead and copy the public IP address. Now from our terminal, we can add the key that we just generated as our identity with ssh add and then coolify yt. And now to ssh into the server, we run ssh root, this is the default username, add and then our IP address. Are we sure we want to connect to the server? Yes. And now we are in our server as the root user. Now at this point there are typically some additional steps that we could take to secure our server a bit more. But I want to keep this video focused as an intro to Coolify and in my next video I'll cover the additional steps that I took to harden this server. To install Coolify let's head over to the documentation. And actually while shooting this video I just noticed that they offer 20 euros of free credits for Hetzner. I was not aware of this before but it might be interesting for you to check out if you want to use Hetzner as well. Then let's head over to get started installation and copy the one liner. Then let's go back into our server and run this command. After a few minutes you should see this message that Coolify has been installed successfully and it also gives us a public IP address at port 8000 where we can now reach our Coolify dashboard. So let's head over there now. And it looks like we got it up and running. Now we should create our root user which has full admin access. We could call this anything, I'm just gonna go with Henry, fill in your email address, a password and hit register. Once we've set up the root user, we're greeted with the onboarding. Let's get started. What is Coolify? We already covered that, so let's click next. Now we are asked if we want to deploy to localhost or to a remote server. In this case, we go with localhost because we want to have Coolify and also all the app that we install just running on our own server. But just for you to know, you could also set up Coolify on one server and have that server just serve Coolify and then have the apps run on a different server, on a remote server, and connect them through SSH. And this way you can have a much more scalable and modular system. But as I said, for now let's go ahead with localhost, and then we can already create a new project. Let's go. Alright, here we are already in the main Coolify UI or dashboard, and specifically we are in the project section and we are asked to deploy or to select a new resource to deploy. As you can see we can select to deploy from a public repository, we can choose a private github repository, we can select Dockerfile, a docker compose. If you have a Next.js application for example in a private github repository you would select this here then establish the connection to GitHub and you can have Coolify build this application for you and serve it on a certain port. You can also configure webhooks that automatically redeploy your application as soon as you make a push to your repository. And then we also have a bunch of different presets. For example, for databases, there's already a preset for Redis, MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, and then there are all sorts of different services. You could host your own Bitcoin node. What else? Excali draw for whiteboard and, and sketching. Then of course we have even something like Olama where you can host your own LLMs. Next Cloud, which is kind of like a Google Drive. And of course we also have NNN here. But before we deploy an application, let's do one more thing. We don't want to always reach our server at its public IP. So let's actually create a domain and connect it to our server. 
Personally, I prefer Namecheap to register and manage my domains. Let's actually look for Henry's World. Let's see how much this would cost. Of course, the .ai one is super expensive. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to go with the Henry's World XYZ. A cheap one. Let's go to checkout. Alright, now I can see the domain in my account dashboard. And if I click on advanced DNS, here I would like to add a new record. For this, let's copy again our IP address from our server. And add a new record, an A record with an at and then the IP address. Let's go and let's add one more A record with an asterisk also pointing to our IP address. So this will redirect calls to henrysworld.xyz and also its subdomains like admin.henrysworld.xyz or henrysworld.xyz slash contact or whatever. It will reroute all of those requests to our public IP address. Usually this takes up to a couple of hours for the changes to take effect. So once we have purchased our domain and pointed it to our server, we can go back into our Coolify console and head over to settings. And here in domain, we want to specify where do we want to reach our Coolify dashboard from now on. I prefer to have it at HTTPS. Make sure it is HTTPS. Coolify Henry's world dot X, Y, Z. Hit save. And there's one more thing that we should do, which is head over to servers, localhost, and then you can see here wildcard domain. Let's add here HTTPS Henry's world.xyz. What this will do is this will tell Coolify to generate a new domain for all of our apps that we will set up. So for example, if we set up N8N, we can get a domain like n8n.henrysworld.xyz. Let's hit save one more time. And let's actually also start up the proxy. The proxy is essentially responsible for securing and routing the traffic to the different applications that we have running on Coolify. Now without Coolify, you would need to manually manage all this, but the Coolify proxy configuration is quite good and you don't really need to worry about it too much. All right, now it says that the proxy is running and let's actually test that it's working by heading over to our site. I forgot the Coolify, coolify.henrysworld.xyz. And perfect, now we can reach Coolify through our domain. The reason I wanted to do this before we install any apps is because now we can still also reach Coolify through our public IP address. But ideally we want to close those ports now and have the Coolify proxy handle internal routing of traffic for us and block most of the traffic coming to our server through our firewall. So let's do that now. I'll head over to Hetzner, to Firewalls and create Firewall. And here we just want to keep the SSH port 22 open and the HTTPS port as well as the HTTP port. Let's create that firewall. Let's go back to our servers. Click on the server, firewalls and apply firewall. Here we can select, not sure if you can see that, but here we can select our firewall, apply. And now you can see that the firewall has been applied. Now if we try again to access our Coolify dashboard directly through the IP, it should not work. And now you can see that it's loading and it will load indefinitely because the port 8000 where Coolify is running has been closed. However, if we go to our domain and we refresh, we can still access it. So now Coolify is only accessible through our domain. All right, now we are back in our main Coolify dashboard. A few more words on what you can do with Coolify in general. You can set up different teams. You can have multiple projects. We can easily add projects. Inside of those projects, we can have different environments like a production environment. We can create a dev environment as well, for example. 
we can see our servers. Currently, we only have localhost and we will install all our apps on localhost. But as I mentioned previously, you could connect other servers as well and have your applications run on those servers. You can connect an S3 storage, shared variables, you can configure notifications, you can create teams. If you want to access this panel with multiple users, you have a terminal that you can directly connect to your Coolify server that's running and directly run commands there and many more things. But now let's talk about how we can actually set up an app on our Coolify server. So let's go to projects, my project and add a new resource. In this case, I'm not going to build from a custom repo or custom Docker file or whatever. I'm just going to select N8N from one of the presets. Where is it? I'm going to choose N8N with Postgres. And instead of this cryptic service name, I'm going to change this to just N8N. And here we can see the Docker containers that are going to be built. So in one container, we're going to have the N8M and in another container, we're going to have Postgres. This one has a domain as well that we can edit. So instead of this cryptic one, I'm going to remove this hash kind of thing and just keep it at n8n.henrysworld.xyz. Let's save. Now you can also directly edit the default N8N Docker Compose template that comes with Coolify, but I haven't had to do this. You could also add some additional environment variables, but this really depends on the service and the configuration that is possible with the application that you are setting up. For now, let's just hit deploy. So this might take a couple of minutes. All right, and it then has been set up and it says that it's running. Now let's head over to the domain that we configured n8n.henrysworld.xyz and there you go we have our own instance of n8n running on our server at our own custom domain now it's going to ask us to set up a root user similar to what we did with coolify but this is not going to be a tutorial on n8n so i'm going to leave it at that my idea here was just to show you how you can set up a particular service using coolify if you want me to make a deep dive on postgres on coolify or n8n or a different tool let me know down in the comments below. That's all I wanted to share with you today. As I mentioned earlier, self-hosting can save you a lot of money and it can be a great learning experience. But the downside of this is that you need to take security into your own hands. There are some crucial security steps that I'm going to cover in another video that you definitely shouldn't miss when self-hosting. I really hope this was helpful. Let me know down in the comments if you've tried self-hosting before. And see you next time for more.